Roll for Crit presents How to Play Exceed in 5 Minutes or Less or More. Exceed is the fighting system card game that pits two players against each other in battle, designed by D. Brad Talton and published by Level 99 Games. There are multiple seasons of Exceed featuring different characters. I'll be covering everything you need to know from seasons 1 through 3, mostly using the Street Fighter cards to demonstrate because they're cool. Your goal in Exceed is to do enough damage to your opponent to lower their life value from 30 points to 0 points. Each player has a character card with its own special ability and their own personal deck of cards representing that character. About half of each player's deck is made up of the same set of generic cards, while the other half is a unique set of character cards. The play area will be made up of 9 spaces represented by these cards included in the game. Players' character cards begin on the 3rd and 7th spaces respectively, with their normal sides facing up. The first player will start with a hand of 5 cards, while the second player begins with a hand of 6. If you'd like, you can mulligan one time by discarding any number of cards face down, drawing back up to your starting hand size, then shuffling your discarded cards back into your deck. Players go back and forth taking turns. On your turn, you can take one action of your choice. Then, if you didn't take the strike action, you get to draw one card into your hand. Striking is the main way you'll be damaging your opponent, so let's cover that one first. Each card in your deck features a set of attributes on the side. Range, power, speed, and sometimes armor or guard. These are the core parts of your battles in Exceed. If any of these isn't listed on a card, it's assumed to be zero. When you decide to strike on your turn, you place a card from your hand face down in front of you, then your opponent does the same. Both players reveal their cards at the same time, then compare attributes. Ignore the bottom section of the card during a strike. We'll talk more about those later. First, compare speed. Whoever has the highest speed takes their card's actions first, with the player who initiated the strike winning ties. Next, if that player's card has any before effects listed on it, those take effect now, before the rest of the fight. Next, range. Range could be a single number or a range of numbers telling you how close you need to be to your opponent's character card on the field in order to hit them. If the character isn't within range, their attack doesn't hit and nothing happens. If they are within range, then they do hit. They deal damage to the other character equal to the played card's power value, minus the opponent's card's armor value. Check to see if the card has any listed hit effects, which would occur now, or after effects, which would occur after the attack has ended. Some cards also have constant effects that are relevant whether they're active or not that you'll want to watch out for. If the starting character successfully hits and deals damage to the other character in an amount equal to or greater than their card's guard level, then that character is stunned. Remember, if they have no printed guard value, it's zero, so any hit would stun them. A stunned character doesn't get to take any of their strike card's actions and the turn ends. If the other character isn't stunned, however, then they get to make an attack of their own using the card that they played right after the first player is finished, checking range and power and effects in the same way. When both players are done, any cards used during the strike are discarded, unless a player managed to hit their opponent. In that case, their strike card is sent to their gauge section to be used later on, and then that turn ends. However, there are actually a few more options that you have when declaring a strike, besides just playing a single card from your hand. First off, you can play two cards face down from your hand if they both have a matching name. This is called an X attack. When you reveal these cards, one of the duplicates gets discarded, but you get a plus one to your speed, power, armor, and guard during that strike. You might also want to play one of your character's ultra cards during a strike. These are powerful cards with a cost in the upper left corner. You'll see a number and a card symbol. This means that when revealed, you need to discard that many cards from your gauge section in order to pay for it. If you're unable to pay that cost, the attack is invalid. The card is discarded and you need to draw the top card of your deck without looking at it and use that as your strike card instead. If this card is also invalid, keep drawing until you get one you can use. This strike method is known as a wild swing, and yes, a wild swing is also something you can do by your own choice on your turn as a strike. If you draw an ultra attack card from a wild swing, you can decide to declare it as invalid even if you can afford it. So you can play one regular attack for free, two regular attacks for free if they have matching names, one ultra card if you can afford the gauge cost, or one wild swing from the top of your deck. In any of these cases, the ensuing strike plays out the same way as described earlier. Now that that's out of the way, let's run down the other actions you can take if you don't feel like striking on your turn. Some of these actions require you to spend a currency known as force. Force can be generated by discarding cards from your hand or gauge area. You get one force for discarding any card from your hand or gauge, or two force for discarding one of your character's ultra cards. There is no physical representation of force in the game. You simply generate as much as you need when you need it. For the boost action, you look at that bottom portion of your cards. In this boost section, you'll find a printed effect and a cost which must be paid in force. 
If you can afford to pay that cost, you can play the chosen card from your hand face up in front of you. If it's an instant effect, carry out its instructions, then discard it. If it's a continuous boost, indicated by a brown cross symbol, then it remains in play, though it may have effects that trigger at different times. During your next strike, any continuous boosts in play will be in effect, potentially boosting your card's attributes or giving you some other bonus. At the end of a strike, all boosts are discarded. The move action lets you move along the play area in one direction, one space for each force point that you generate. It costs two force to move past an opponent, and two characters can never share the same space. You also can't move beyond either side of the play area. The prepare action lets you draw a single card from your deck, and that's it. Or you can change cards. This action lets you draw multiple cards from your deck, but unlike the prepare action, changing cards costs you one force point for each card you decide to draw. The reshuffle action allows you to reshuffle your entire discard pile back into your main deck. This can be helpful if there are cards in your discard pile that you'd like to potentially draw again. Each player can only take the reshuffle action once per game. And finally, there's the exceed action. You know, like the name of the game. Character cards begin and play on their normal sides, but they also have a printed gauge cost on them. If you have enough cards in your gauge area to pay this cost, you can take the exceed action and flip your card to its other side. The other side generally gives you a stronger ability. It's good and you want it. Again, if you do not strike during your turn, then at the end of your turn you get to draw one card to your hand. Your max hand size is 7, so if you ever exceed this number, you must discard back down to 7 at the end of your turn. There are also a whole bunch of keywords to keep in mind. Advance means to move in the direction of your opponent, while retreat means the opposite. Close means to move as close to your opponent as possible without moving past them. Moving past an opponent is known as switching sides. Pushing or pulling an opponent moves them towards or away from you. Gaining advantage means that you'll take the next turn regardless of whose turn it was previously. Sealing a card means to remove it from the game and place it into a special sealed area. Sustaining allows you to keep a continuous boost out after a strike is over. Season 2 of Exceed features transformation abilities, which replace the boost abilities on some cards. To play one, you need to hit your opponent with an attack with a transformation on it. Then, you can choose to move it to your transformation area instead of your gauge area. Also, if you have both copies of the same transformation card in hand, you can discard one to play the other. From now on, you'll have access to those cards' abilities, and for each card in your transformation area, the gauge cost for your character's exceed action is lowered by two. Keep in mind you can't have more than one card with the same name in this section. Season 3 features the new critical keyword. If a card has a critical ability printed on it, then you can pay one gauge card before revealing it during a strike to activate that ability. Players continue taking turns back and forth until someone's life is drained to zero and they lose. The first time a player's deck runs out, they reshuffle it, but if their deck runs out a second time, they lose this way as well. Defeat your opponent before your deck runs out of cards twice in order to win. In conclusion, force, move, boost, strike, exceed. That's it in a nutshell, did you get all that?